ChatGPT is $20 per month and Gemini Advanced is $20 per month, which can get quite expensive. But today, I'll compare ChatGPT and Gemini with the same prompts, analyze their responses back to back and compare their unique features. So by the end, we'll find out which one is our favorite. As you can see, we have ChatGPT on the left and Gemini on the right. I have the max version that you can buy for both of them. So let's go to prompt number one. Write me the longest story with as many words as possible. I'll start them both at the same time. Now, Gemini is going to win on speed. It just really is a lot faster as you can see right here. So as you can see, the right side is just finished. Gemini is finished and ChatGPT is actually writing the story. On Gemini, it actually said, unfortunately, there's no such thing as the absolute longest story with as many words as possible. And he's explaining here's why. So he actually doesn't really want to try even. Let me actually ask it, write it for me. Now you can see that it actually is trying to write the story. Take a look at ChatGPT here. It actually managed to write pretty long. Let's see the actual prompt length, giving us a whopping 843 words. Now the second response for Gemini, 578 words. I think it's fair to say that length goes to ChatGPT and speed goes to Gemini. Prompt number two, ethics. You find a wallet on the ground with $100 in it with an ID of a girl. What do you do? Gemini is answering right away with don't take any of the money, handle the ID with care, locate the owner. If you can't reach the owner, turn it into the nearest police station. Okay, that's the right thing to do. And ChatGPT, try to contact the owner directly. Second, turn into local authorities or lost and found. Three, use social media. And four, leave it where you found it. So both actually said social media. I actually don't agree to leave it where you found it. It says, if you believe the owner might come back looking for it, eh, maybe, but someone else might find it who might not take the steps to return it. I think both get points for ethics here. Prompt number three, image generation. Make an image of a teddy bear sitting on a skateboard in Times Square. Here are the results. Let's check out ChatGPT first. It has a very nice feel to it. It even has some blur in the background. It looks like the perspective is all correct. Ice all glossy and the little bow tie as well. Fur, skateboard, yep, it looks really good. Second Dolly image also looks really good as we come to expect from Dolly. We even have some people in the background and they look okay. Okay, it does look like they're warping a little bit, but all pretty okay. When we go over to Gemini's image generation, you can see this image here as well. It looks like the skateboard is a little bit more warped into the background right here. The wheels as well, and this wouldn't really be realistic. There is the second image. This one looks a lot better. It even has this grungy vibe to it. Nice blurred background with people. The last example it gave, it actually had roller skates on and like, is this female roller skates? I'm not sure. Since I've done multiple tests of Dolly versus Gemini at this point, image gen goes to ChatGPT. But what about prompt number four? Solve four X and Y. A pretty basic math equation here. As you can see, both of them try to go step by step through the equation. As you can see, the solution is X minus a half and Y is two. GPT said X is minus a half and Y is two. Gemini says X minus a half and Y equals two. The cool part about Gemini is that you can actually click on show draft. You can see three of the drafts here which further increases the speed point. And you can see the solution here is minus 0.5, which of course is the same. Both will get points in basic math. Prompt number five, code a snake game in Python. You can see both of them get to it. Gemini being, of course, a little bit faster. It does also split up the code, which some people might not like. It also gives sources to this pythonprogramming.net website. Well, I'm just gonna copy paste this one by one, which is actually quite annoying, which is a little funny to say because it actually wrote all this code for me. As far as I see, it actually is quite detailed as well. It's 121 lines of code and there aren't even that many errors. Let's try to run it. As you can see, it's actually running on the screen right now and, and I'm eating food. 
it does actually increase the score so gemini not bad let's see what happens if i hit the wall or even better yet if i hit my own tail it stops the game which is really good everything we're looking for in a benchmark all in one prompt which is very good let's check out the gpt snake it has 115 lines of code so a tiny bit shorter but does it work as good let's run it and here it is i just move my mouse and it actually works as well this one has the light version which it literally works the exact same. You cannot see the score in the top, I believe, because this is a white box. As far as I'm, I'm concerned, it works. Both of them using very similar techniques. But if I would choose, this one does not have a score. Let's try to eat my own tail. I actually lost. Now, this one doesn't exit the game. It actually gives us a Q to quit or C to play again, which is another pro of GPT Snake. Which one would you go for? To be honest, they're very, very similar. Both of them get a point for the Snake game. I did do a bit of research into if it's better for coding and ChatGPT is still the best one for coding. Prompt number six, image understanding. What do these signs mean starting from the top left? As you can see, they're both starting to explain exactly what they are. And Gemini gave us a little shortcut, giving us only four signs here, while ChatGPT is giving us nine. Let's see what happens in the drafts here. Yeah, here as well, it has only four image signs that it's described to us not nine like it should be gpt got everything correct except number eight no horns sign which actually looks like this but this one is no truck sign let's test one other image of this meme with a guy looking at a girl the prompt what's happening in this image gpt is answering and gemini is saying I can't help with that. GPT is saying that the woman that's walking with the man is looking at him with a disapproving expression. So that's really good that it actually gets that. Image understanding goes to ChatGPT. Number seven, riddles. Everyone has be, but nobody can lose me. What am I? Both of them got a shadow. Day before two days after the day before tomorrow is Saturday what day is it today gpt said that it's friday and gemini said it's wednesday in this case chat gpt is right let's check the drafts to see if it actually got it right in the other attempts it actually said wednesday on all different attempts on gemini chat gpt is taking the riddle number eight brainstorming i'm making a video on how i created an entire faceless youtube channel about the history of the renaissance era could you brainstorm some ways to make this video better? But what I'm really looking for here is obviously pretty objective. It's what benefits me, what can make me make the video a little bit faster or get some unique ideas or perspectives to where I can put the video through. I never write videos from ChatGPT or Gemini, but they are really good at giving me idea on ChatGPT, they say like behind the scenes insights i think that's cool use of visuals since it's faceless we need more visuals to tell our stories which is a good idea as well narration techniques I need to be engaging through my voice I need something better engagement metrics like show some insights through the channel's performance it all seems pretty basic in my opinion Let's check out gemini the hook this actually helps me a lot faster. Start with a shocking fact, like this banned Renaissance book changed the world and you never heard of it. Actually, this is a really good hook that we could have in the intro, right? Did the Renaissance even happen? Here's why some historians say no. Right away, really curiosity driven. And I tested this many times in the past as well. I really just like how Gemini responds to this. So I'm happy to give brainstorming to Gemini. Number nine, unique features so you may already know that chat gpt obviously has the gpt store that allows us to do a lot of stuff that we wouldn't normally be able to it's kind of like the app store but for llms and since chat gpt was so early they now have started getting a bunch of developers on creating their feature for google they don't have that but they do have something special that ChatGPT 
isn't able to do. When you have a personal account of Gemini, you get these extensions. And the extensions include Google Workspace, Drive, Doc. And what that means is I can ask it, what are my five last emails? Just like that, it's gonna use Google Workspace, go through Gmail. And the same goes if I say my last docs or sheets or slides, because it's connected to your Google Drive. As you can see, you get the last five subject lines as well as the emails right here, and if I click on one of them, opens directly in Gmail. This is something that isn't possible to do inside of ChatGPT, and actually, if you would get access to this, it would only be through Microsoft Copilot if you have the 365 package. So it's safe to say that if you're in the Google ecosystem and you want to get access to your files quickly, you don't really care about the image capabilities. Gemini is a good choice, but for most people, I've used both of them for a couple of weeks now and ChatGPT is still my go-to, but I do actually use Gemini quite a bit as well for brainstorming or these easy bullet points that kind of, as you saw, gave me directly these curiosity bullets. And Gemini is better at certain type of formatting that makes me spark ideas faster, but you can still do that on the free plan without the advanced. So that's my comparison of ChatGPT versus Gemini. What do you think in the description down below? If you wanna see how Gemini is affecting all of your other Google tools, click the next video on the screen now, and I'll see you in the next video.